Well, exciting news. I bought a car specifically to go cruising. And I still ended up stranded roadside after my cruise. What a, what a day yesterday. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with a, a story time. How about that? We'll save some cruise news for tomorrow, uh, and we'll just do this story. And look, I, I was hoping it wasn't going to be a story, but uh, as, as things often turn out in my life, it is a story. Uh, but but welcome. It is Monday, the 24th of January. And let me, inter let me interject this. Let me interject this. I was going to do this show outside by the pool since it's not a news news show, but it's 34 degrees in Florida. And that's too dang cold. I know some people say, I live in Antarctica. It's negative 80. I moved to Florida to be in the heat. Okay? I don't care where you live where it's cold. You live in a cold place. I do not live in a cold place. <sighs> I mean, I do care if you're cold. Don't be cold. Be safe. But still, it, it is too cold for my thin blood and my thin short pants. There was a light frost on the ground this morning. A light frost. It's all good. It's, it's all good. Did I mention I was on a cruise last week? I just got off a week on the Harmony of the Seas, and it was fan freaking tastic. I had a great time, and if you tracked along with it at all, you may have picked up on the nuance that I broke one of my cruise rules. I broke one of my cruise rules. I always travel to the cruise city the night before the cruise in case anything goes wrong. Uh, that way I've got a little bit of a time buffer so I don't miss my cruise. Uh, also, if you've been with us for a while, and I know we have a lot of new people, uh, welcome to the new people. Uh, we worked really hard to make sure that we didn't have any car notes anymore. We paid off our cars. We did what we had to do. And and then we were down to one car during the uh, pandemic. And so the one car that we have is a car that we've had for close to 10 years, 180,000 miles. Uh, we're happy to drive it around our little town, drive it to Tampa, but we don't go much further than that. Uh, one time we did take it to Orlando and it straight up broke down on the way to Orlando. We took that as a sign as just drive the car around town. And if you want to go on a cruise, maybe rent a car. Well, we've been saving, right? We've been saving month after month after month. And we finally got to the place where we could spend a little bit of money on a used car. Uh, we were looking for a used car that had some low mileage, and uh, th this was the time to pull the trigger for this cruise to come up with a new car, to not rent a car to go cruising, but to get a new car, a used car, uh, to go cruising. And so we went to CarMax. CarMax down there in Tampa, and we met a guy named Lee. And Lee uh, was a helpful gentleman, and he was a cruiser. So the stars were certainly aligning during this car purchase uh, experience. And let me tell you, that's the first time I'd ever shopped for a car at CarMax. I like it. The cars do cost a little more because there's this haggle-free thing going on there where they don't, you know, haggle about the price. But you go there, and they have a huge car lot full of cars, and they don't even they don't even walk around with you. They're like, go out there. Uh, the cars are unlocked. Sit in them. Feel it out. And then and when you find one, come back and talk to us. That was pretty cool because right now, one of the big things that I'm looking for in a car is a car that has enough room for me as a big guy. And I've been reading online, uh, finding out dimensions for hip width and stuff like that. And I'd settled on the Kia Soul. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a boxy looking car. It's a little nerdy looking car, but I knew it had good uh, hip width and I knew it was fairly reliable, good gas mileage, and wasn't going to be too expensive in the used car space. And so uh, amazingly, amazingly. Amazingly, I found a Kia Soul from 2020 that only had 6,600 and something miles, uh, not even 7,000 miles, and the price was really reasonable. We, we looked up the pricing, and uh, boom, we decided to pull the trigger, and we bought ourselves a newish used car, and with only, you know, under 7,000 miles, uh, 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 almost a real new car. Like, it's very close to being a brand new car, and we got it for a great price. Uh, we bought it outright. Again, we're staying away from the car payments and we, we brought the car home and we drove it very little uh, before the cruise uh, just around town briefly and so this became the cruise plan I was going to drive to the cruise the day of the cruise because it's only two hours two hours and a half over to Port Canaveral and uh, now I have this reliable car I don't really have to worry about it uh, it's going to be fine
fine. I'm not going to have any trouble with my crews. And that turned out to be true. And also a big shout out to local fam members and friends of ours, Peg and Artie. They allowed me to park the car at their house. They live in Coco. They allowed me to park the car in their house. So I didn't have any crazy parking fees. It, it's stacking up to be a great story. I drove over there. Now, one of the features I really like about this car is it had Apple Play. I know it's like, I want a good stereo. I want good gas mileage. And I just want a car that runs. I don't need any frills. And that's exactly what I had in the Kia. It was black on black. Here's, well, here's the picture of it. And uh, I drove over last Sunday and no problems. Drove over. I parked over at Peg and Artie's and went cruising. It was beautiful. Uh, the, the story takes a twist, though, yesterday as I start to make my way home. So I get off the cruise ship at 6.30. I make it to my car by 7. I'm in the car. I found a coffee spot. And then I'm on the road. And I'm supposed to be home by like 9.15, something like that. And everything was going good on the way home until I got to be about, I don't know, 40 miles away from the house. And then the car started doing something weird. Uh, it started going like this. GG. 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 And I, I, I scanned the instruments there and I saw the RPMs were going like this. GG. GG. And I thought that was weird. And then I roll up to a stoplight and stop. And it's one of those cars that shuts off when you stop it. And so there I am stopped at the stoplight. The engine is off. The light turns green and the, the car kicks back on as I release the brake. And then I step on the gas and the engine just revs and the car goes nowhere. I'm in, in the middle of an intersection, just, I, I throw on my hazards real quick, people are coming around me, and then all of a sudden it kicks in, and the car just, it takes off. Uh, but then as I go down the road a little bit, it will not accelerate. So I pull off into a, a, a like a Dollar General. Fortunately, I was able to pull off the road. Uh, the, the car stopped working. So again, I bought the car with 6,600 miles. At this time, the odometer had just turned over to 7,000 miles. So I've driven the car 400 miles, and it does not work anymore. Uh, whew. That was, it was, uh, it was stressful just to say the least. It was stressful because I could not comprehend in my mind how I went and bought a fairly new car that seemingly should have no troubles at all. That was now stuck on the side of the road. I'm stuck stranded. Now I got the roadside assist from Geico. I got uh, some form of triple A. So I get on the Geico app. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, I'm going to have them tow the car to my house. Uh, then I call Jenny on the phone and she comes and gets me. It takes Jenny about 40 minutes to get to where I'm at. It takes the tow truck an hour and a half to get where I'm at. And uh, yeah, when I was supposed to be home at 930 ish. I think I got home at 1130. We had a quick lunch. I jumped on and did the cruise news. Uh, but during this whole process we're trying to figure out what to do and, and, and look let me take a moment right here to say something about that video i put the craps video up yesterday i finished it up on saturday night i put it up for sunday so that i would have a video up and i knew that not everybody would watch it and certainly that turned out to be true as i watched that video progress uh you know in the car on the way home i, I realized that the, that video wasn't for everybody and i felt like i'd underserved the audience and as soon as i got home i wanted to make a cruise news video so that more people would have something to watch that the, the people that weren't in to craps wouldn't be left out yesterday. That's what I did. So I sat down right away before we figured out the rest of the day and I made that what I thought was a pretty good high energy video. And as I worked through the comments during the first hour, like I do, uh, so many great comments, so many people responding positively, but there was like a few reoccurring comments that uh, kind of took me off guard. So I thought it'd be worth mentioning it because I, I just don't understand how people are thinking right now. But uh, the, the, the comments like this, hey, Tony, you're off the cruise. You can take off your vaccine break bracelet. Hey, Tony, are you so into your vaccine bracelet that you're going to wear it all the time? Yeah, don't offer up a comment about the subject of the video. Just get uptight about the vaccine bracelet. Hopefully through this video, you're getting a sense of what was going on in my world yesterday. Uh, I tell you what, vaccine bracelet was the last thing coming to mind as I sat down to make a high energy video. Look, I took it off. So everybody that's uptight about the vaccine bracelet, it's gone. It's gone. Don't be strong so tight, guys. Like, enjoy the enjoy the content. And so after the tow truck picks up the car at the Dollar General, Jenny and I have this 40-minute ride home. And, and really, you can imagine what the conversation is. It's it's disbelief, really. It's disbelief that, that this car, which is a, a seemingly new car, which uh, should have removed all of the challenges of driving back and forth to the cruise port, uh, left me stranded on the side of the road. And uh, certainly, life is imperfect. Machines are imperfect. Uh, all that 
comes to mind, but statistically, uh, that car should not have broken. And so we're trying to figure out what to do. Do we get the car repaired? Do we, the, now, fortunately, uh, and we didn't really know how it would work, but uh, CarMax, they have a 30 day money back guarantee if you're dissatisfied. 30 days, or uh, if you've driven the car under 1,500 miles, that's the condition. You can't drive the car more than 1,500 miles, and it can't be any longer than 30 days. We met both of those conditions. So we, we start having the conversation, uh, is this a, a sign of uh, future trouble to come? Is this indicative of that? Uh, you know, is this some sort of, uh, you know, a poke by the universe that maybe this isn't the right car for cruising? But there is some uh, trepidation there because will they take it back now that the car is broke? Uh, you know, does it have to be running for them to take it back? We were concerned that this would be what we ran into. We would soon know the answer to that question. I'll share the answer to that question with you. But first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. It's the cruise life. Uh, we're here to talk to you about the news and everything else that's going on in it. We're trying to get to 18 million subscribers this year. And uh, I tell you what, we've had a lot of people respond in the month of January. The most subscribers we've ever had in one month have responded to the 18 million subscriber call. Uh, thanks, everybody who's brand new. Thanks for joining the local fam. Tell a cruising friend. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's show YouTube what cruise tubing is all about. Uh, subscribe notification bell. And now, uh, wait till I tell you what the uh, CarMax said. We called CarMax customer service and said, hey, uh, we're having some trouble with this car. We think we would like to return it under your return policy. And they said, hey, no problem. Just drive it back to the CarMax, speak to the business office there, and we'll get you your money back. <laughs> and then, of course, our response was, well, we can't really drive it back there. It's not working. Uh, and they were like, no problem. We'll send our own tow truck, and we'll get it towed back for you uh, on our dime. Uh, just go to the CarMax and speak to the people there. And that's that's what we did. So tow truck shows up at our house. They, they load up the, the beautiful Kia Soul. They take it off and we head over to CarMax in Tampa. The car shows up there. We talk to a couple people. We're probably there about an hour and a half. Uh, we sign a bunch of paperwork and they give us a receipt that they're mailing us a check for the money that we spent at CarMax. Uh, other than the, the time it took, it was very transactional, like making a return anywhere else. And so uh, now we wait uh, for a couple weeks for the saga to end. It's a moment where I was like, wow, I can't believe the CarMax sold me a car that broke down at 400 miles. But uh, again, as I reflect on the whole CarMax experience, especially the way they responded to us asking for our money back, it, it's pretty solid. Uh, I tell you what, the, the picking out the car, the purchasing the car, it was easy peasy. I enjoyed it. And the return process. Easy peasy. I enjoyed it. So again, rationally, as I think about it logically, uh, cars break down, even new cars break down. And so I'm not holding that against CarMax. They do all the inspections and all that stuff. So uh, again, a uh, big shout out to Lee from CarMax for all of the help and uh, shout out to CarMax for uh, the, the process they have there because it's very customer friendly and uh, I would use them again. I possibly will use them again uh, if we do this again. So I don't know. I, I don't know what all that means. Does does that mean that even for a two hour drive over to Port Canaveral, I still should be going the night before? Is that what the universe is telling us? Or is this just a fluke? Uh, and the, the next time I get a newish used car for cruising that, uh, you know, that it'll be okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, all those questions on the table. I'd love to hear what you think about any of it. Thanks so much for checking out the show today. We'll be back tomorrow or maybe later today with some more cruise news. Just depends what's going on. Uh, but if you like the show, you can show that you liked it by hitting the like button. And if you dislike the show, you could hit the dislike button either. Just hit one of the buttons. That's what I'm trying to say. And look, if you do not, if you do not hit one of the buttons, then uh, uh, car trouble could be coming on your way. So somebody said it was karma because of the towel animals that I had car trouble, that I was stranded, that I was stuck in the middle of an intersection. Look, talk about uh, punishment not befitting the crime. We're talking about towels versus me in the middle of an intersection. How dare you? But yeah, I'll put it on you if you don't hit the like button. Car trouble coming your way. Is that hypocritical? I don't know. Uh, this is Tony for La Lida Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.